sure is a privilege each day to be able to come to you and share a Bible study with you. I think we're living in a pretty exciting time. And there's a story in the Old Testament that we've been looking at. We started yesterday, the watchman on the wall, to see his responsibility and to correlate it to what our responsibility is today. The reason I say that is because I've never seen a time in, in my lifetime where I've seen so much of the Bible being fulfilled on a daily basis. And so we're kind of starting that whole idea of the watchman on the wall. Last lesson we learned from Ezekiel chapter 33 that, that on the wall there was a watchman and he lived in a tower. And the job of the watchman, remember, was just to look straight ahead and to sound the alarm if the enemy came. Remember, his job was not to stop the army. He couldn't do that. How could one man stop an army? But he could warn people. And if he warned them properly, then God said that, that he was counted worthy. If he didn't warn them, then the blood of all the people that lost their lives was on him. And, and frankly, I feel a little bit that way. You see, as I read the Bible, and I, I love to study the Bible, I love to read the Bible, and I've enjoyed it even before I became so interested in prophecy. But now that I see what is taking place on the world stage and how it correlates to the Bible, it's even more exciting. And so pretend like you're that watchman, that your job is to be looking to see, is the enemy coming? Is there harm that's gonna come to, to the city? And if so, then we need to, to warn people. And so this watchman, sometimes several hundred feet high, uh, have, had a great perspective and he would be telling the people, wow, the enemy's coming. And so that's our job today. Now, what do we tell them? Well, number one, I would tell them there's forgiveness for their sins. You know, as I meet people, I think, I think people on a whole have a, have a, a thing, they, they know they're estranged from God. Sin estranges us from God all the way back in the Garden of Eden. And their sin haunts them. And they can have forgiveness of that sin through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection on the cross. I think the next thing that I would tell them is the fact that, that the debt has been fully paid. It wasn't partially paid by Jesus, it was all paid by Jesus. And next I would let them know the joys of heaven. They're not gonna miss out on anything on the earth other than the tribulation and hard times, the joys of heaven. So we have a great message to tell them, don't we? We're the watchmen on the wall. Remember yesterday we talked about the idea of famine, the, the idea that, that the Bible mentions in a variety of places concerning the end time that there would be famine. And we saw how that could easily take place. People buying up land, people taking farming land out of production. It was both in America and it was overseas. It was sometimes for financial gain, it was sometimes for, for security reasons, but we watched how food could figure in the last days exactly as the Bible said. But today I wanna to talk about the currency because again, I, I think I see how this could fit in so well with what is taking place in the last days, what the Bible says and what is taking place today in our time. In other words, we must be living in the last days. And I call it the, the new money in the new world. The new world order has always been trying to bring a, a new economy in. And we read a couple places in Revelation, like Revelation chapter 18, verses 14 and 15. I'll let you read those on your own, but, but basically it says, that all the things that were, that were uh, selling for, for great money, all of a sudden they had no value. There was a collapse. And then later it said that, that everything in one hour, all the riches come to nothing. In other words, there's gonna be some, some play with the riches of the world, the money systems of the world, and it's gonna actually be for the benefit of those who wanna control, namely the Antichrist. Well, I'm sure that you've been seen in the news, the petrodollar, the US dollar, the yen dollar, all these things, what do we do? Are the, are the crypto dollar and the Bitcoin and the digital currency, yeah? We, here's what we know. We know that the world in large is looking for a way to change the economy of the world, the money system of the world. How does that figure into the end time? Well, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says whatever system it is, it will collapse and it will collapse in an instant of time. Let me show you just a, a couple of things why I'm really suspicious of what is going on. I, am I worried? No, I'm not worried because I know that God has a plan, but I want you to see what the world is saying is taking place.
See what I mean? The whole world is talking about a, a change of currency. Now, let me be really honest with you. How does the gold currency help Africa? You say, well, Africa has gold. But, you know, I also have news articles that show how China has been to Africa recently, making all kinds of deals with them. Russia's been to them. And, and let me tell you this, that the gold in Africa will be stolen by those big economies, those big governments. They're, they're, already, making, they're already making that. So it doesn't matter whether it's a, a petrodollar, a, a U.S. dollar, a gold standard dollar. The whole thing is the idea it's changing. But I think it's, uh, there's another way that it's changing, and all these are going to converge together. Because you see, here's what they're saying. The end of June of this year, they admitted that 130 countries are exploring central bank digital currencies. That's incredible. I mean, really, that, that means that almost all the world is looking at a way to do a digital currency. Now, of these, and by the way, that controls 98% of all the world uh, economics is, would be done in those, in those countries that are looking at digital currency. So how are they going to do it? And why is that so important? Well, here's why I think it correlates exactly. When you go back to Revelation chapter 17, it talks about the fact that there are seven kings or seven kingdoms. Five of them are fallen. One is and the other only comes for a short time. And on other programs, we've, we've demonstrated that, that the last kingdom that comes is a 10 king federation. Okay. And, and they're going to rule for one hour for one short period of time. And then the Bible says, it, that they're going to give all their power unto the Antichrist. These have one mind shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Now, that's interesting because the only reason they do so is because it says that things are completely out of control. And so these 10 kings, they're going to give their power to this Antichrist. Why would they do it? Here's why. Because the economies are completely a disaster. No matter what economy they go to, it's going to be that way. All the way back in the book of Daniel, we have the... the Daniel chapter 2, and it talks about these images. And each one, Babylon was the head of gold. Meets in the Persians, the chest of silver. Alexander the Great, the, the bronze legs and, and belly. And then Rome, the iron legs. And then the last kingdom, the, the Ten Nation Federation. Now, isn't that interesting? In Daniel, it talked about a Ten Nation Federation by the Ten Toes. In Revelation 17, it says that the last human kingdom is 10 kings who give their power to this Antichrist. I think maybe one of the most important verses, single verse in all the Bible concerning timing in terms of prophecy would be in Daniel chapter two, as Daniel explains this kingdom to Nebuchadnezzar. And here's what he says in verse 34. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces, consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And so here's what we know. Exactly like Revelation chapter 17 says, these kingdoms all give their power to an antichrist. They do so because there's a collapse governmentally and economically. Daniel, he says the same thing. So are we watching this come true and, and how does it fit together? Well, look at this. I'm talking a number of years ago, the United Nations took the liberty to divide the world into 10 regions. Believe me, they weren't trying to fulfill Bible prophecy, but they did. And so if you, if you look at North America, you see here's a zone, and, and many of the maps show Canada, United States, and some of them show Mexico. But, but there's 10 distinct regions. I wouldn't be surprised if those are the regions. And, and their divisions are clearly known, clearly documented. It's been that way for over a decade. And, and so what... I believe is taking place is we're going to see an economic collapse in such a way that these 10 regions will say we need help. There's no way that we can continue on. And so according to the Bible, they're going to give all their power to the Antichrist. How, how does this work? Well, first of all, let's say they go to a digital currency. And when you see 130 countries all studying digital currency, all wanting to go that way, sooner or later, it's going to go. You got to admit the petrodollar is gone. The gold standard is going to be hard to ever bring it back. And so the digital currency, I think there's some growing reason why it's going to come to the front. Number one, they say it's because of transparency. All the transactions can be seen. No secret deals. 
you know, look at the, the corruption that we have in our own government concerning deals made for, for weapons and for other services. They say, see, we can get rid of uh, transparency. Well, there's another thing. All the transactions that had to be approved or disapproved. Let's just say, for example, that they don't like your carbon footprint. Literally, the climate control people say that if you have a bad carbon footprint, they should make it so that you can't buy as much or sell as much. They, they might even say, you know what? You're approved to buy a desk or you're approved to buy a chair, but you gotta buy it from certain people. So they can monitor you, they can control you. They might even say you can only buy so much meat. You, you, you gotta buy a healthier diet. You can't eat out so much. You see, it's, it's almost ridiculous. They wanna be able to control it. And right now with paper money, with different currencies, I mean, look how many different currencies there are. Look how many different standards there are. Some are trading oil and yen, some are trading uh, oil and, and petrodollars. Some want a gold standard. India has their own gold standard. I mean, it's, it's helter skelter. But if we went to a digital currency worldwide, wow, this would really, uh, this would really be incredible, wouldn't it? Now, the currency then, they say it could be either canceled or discounted by the government. In other words, the government would say, you gotta spend so much of your money. If you have more than this in your account, we can discount it. Your, your dollar is only gonna be worth 85 cents. You know, when I look at all this, here's what I say. It's not about the fact that these currencies that we have right now don't work. It's the fact that they want control. The whole thing is control. And we see all the way back in the book of Daniel chapter two, with the 10 toes and the stone that comes, we see in Revelation chapter 17, and the 10 kingdoms, the world's already divided into 10 economic regions. And they're, they're so frightened because of the collapse, Revelation chapter 18, that they give all their power to the Antichrist. And this is exactly, I mean, folks, this is exactly what the Bible said in Revelation 13, 17 that when the Antichrist comes to power, he will control and you will not be able to buy or sell or trade except you have his mark or the name of the Antichrist or his number. Matter of fact, I, I like a saying that I heard just this past week from Adrian Rogers, a godly man, a, a Bible prophecy preacher and a, a great student of God's word. And he said, isn't it interesting that when salvation comes, God writes your name in the book of life. And when the Antichrist comes, he gives you a number. Th that's the difference. You see, God gives you a name and he puts it in the book of life. The Antichrist gives you a number and you're nothing more than a number, a, a statistic to him. I think that explains a, a, the whole difference between salvation through Jesus Christ and what's coming to this earth in terms of the Antichrist. You see, famine, the Bible predicted is coming. We're watching how it's just on the horizon. Economic collapse, we're, we're watching how it's just on the horizon. You know what, I could, I could give you six or seven more articles on, on how big the debt is worldwide. Even China, even China is struggling with debt. Russia is struggling with debt. The United States is struggling with debt. We call those the, the world leaders in terms of economy. They're struggling in debt. It's strangling. My friend, after the Lord comes, by the time we get three and a half years into the tribulation, these kings are gonna be so frightened that sooner or later they're gonna give all their power to the Antichrist and say, you figure it out. And that's when he's gonna have the world exactly where he wants him. He thinks he's gonna have them in total control. Well, here's another subject that I think we can be watchmen on the wall. It's wars. You see, what's interesting to me is that really, I think the elite of the world want wars. Now, now think about that for a minute. Why? Number one, they get their wealth that way. So many of the, the top wealthiest people get their money from wars. They benefit from wars. Number two, many of them have actually are proponents of eliminating people. They, they don't care if 10,000 people die or 100,000 die. What difference does, does it make to Putin if some of his people die? He could care less. I think it's another way of fear and for sure it's another way to control us. But let's look at some of the ideas that are taking place with wars and some that are mentioned in the headlines now that are mentioned in the Bible. Here's one that I think is, is taking the, the world really by storm. This is just 
this past week in July 2023, the National Security Council advisor, Jake Sullivan, he confirms that the United States is going to deliver cluster bombs to the Ukraine. Now, now think about this for a minute. And of all things, against this background, the president went out and said, because we're short on, on ammunitions, then we're gonna have to use a cluster bomb. Wow, they tried to walk that one back. I mean, what, a, what an incredible admission. The fact that we are low on ammunitions, why? Well, you see, we've, we shipped them all over the world. We, we have some of them shipped to the Middle East to help some of the Palestinians. We have some, a lot of it shipped to the Ukraine. And by the way, again, isn't it amazing? The president of the Ukraine is, is becoming extremely wealthy. Not just millions of dollars, but now billions of dollars have disappeared. Even his top 15 or 20 generals are all suspected of, of somehow profiting from this because they're all becoming millionaires. Look at his palace. It's, it's, a, it's, it's fantastic. And, and we're giving money to support this thing. Don't get me wrong. I, I feel sorry for the people of Ukraine. I feel sorry for the people of Russia. But the leaders are godless people, greedy people. And so that's what's taking place. Now, what an announcement that we're going to use the cluster bomb. And, and I, I, wanted, I, I want you to think about this for a minute, because just a little while ago, several years ago, a year and a half ago, the mention of the cluster bomb came up at the White House briefing. Listen to this brief clip on the cluster bomb. Wow, you see, it was wrong to use the cluster bomb about a year ago. What's changed? Is the cluster bomb not as effective? Is it not as deadly? Well, it's still against the rules of war. Believe it or not, there's rules for war. But what's different is that we decided there's a way for us to take advantage of the cluster bomb. And because we're short on munitions, our president has approved it. Our, our security people said, let's use the cluster bomb. I think the world should say, hey, United States, live by your own rules. It's almost embarrassing. And so again, yesterday, here's the news. The cluster bomb is now gonna become an established thing. We can excuse it any way we want to, but the Bible talks about the fact that major portions of the population will be eliminated and they would be due to wars. Matthew chapter 24 makes it very clear. And, and so what are some of these wars that the Bible mentioned? You know what? They're all lining up. The Bible talks about how that in the last days, Russia and China will both come toward Israel. Ezekiel 38, Revelation chapter 9, 16. It gives the size of the army, 200 million men, exactly the size of the Chinese army. Look at, at how Russia and China have both threatened Israel. We're, we're watching this take place. My friends, we're watchmen on the wall. Don't you think we ought to say something? That's our job. I can't stop China and I can't stop Russia, but I can let you know the Bible said, this is the evil thing that's gonna take place in the end time. Or how about this? There's an alliance between Russia, China, and Iran. And again, you go to Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, and these armies are mentioned by name as invading. And it says no less than three times in one chapter, in the latter days, in the latter days, in the latter days. My friend, I don't really think that invasion takes place until after the church is gone because they invade when Israel says, we're gonna be at peace, we're gonna be at rest. They're gonna be tricked by an antichrist. They're gonna sign a seven year treaty. And before the treaty's halfway done, the antichrist is gonna go back on his word, but they're gonna have invasions threatening them from Russia, China, and Iran, exactly the scenario that we find today. Wow, the Bible is up to date, isn't it? Or how about this? The Bible says in Matthew 24 that it will be wars and it'll be kingdom against kingdom. Not just nation against nation, that as well, but kingdom against kingdom. Like people, related people. I look at the war in Ukraine 
And often it's just to distract from Russia's progress in the Middle East. Russia, after the Ukraine war has broken out, has made great inroads into Syria, into Afghanistan. Yeah, into, into every area, including Lebanon. Syria and Russia, Russia almost occupies it totally. The, the leader there is a puppet for Russia. Look at Russia and Iran and, and selling weapons back and forth. Russia doping their nuclear uh, weapons and, and uh, material for the bombs in Iran. Iran supplying drones to Russia and, and wealth, unbelievable wealth. I mean, people, nations, not just America, other nations are giving not millions, but now billions of dollars and somehow the money is disappearing. It, it's, it's not arriving there. It's not, even, it's not even used to be fighting. It's going in the pocket of some of these generals and the president of both countries are, are benefiting. This is unbelievable. But the Bible said this would be the conditions in the last days. The Bible also said that there would be wars surrounding Israel. And you look at the Golan Heights, you see the tension there. Again, it's Russia, Syria, airborne, air patrol. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, Folks, the scenario for the end time written by the Bible 2,000 to 4,000 years ago could not be clearer than what it is right now. You see, we're on the brink of watching all these things take place. So when these things happen, I think we go back and we say, okay, what's the purpose? I mean, why, why does the world want this? Well, here's what I would conclude. I think they're saying, you know what? We know you're concerned for your health. We're concerned for your health. We know you're concerned for your food and, and we are too. We're looking out for you. We, we know you're concerned for your money and, and we're looking out for your money. And we know you're concerned for your freedom. And so that's why we're engaged in these wars. They, they make it sound like the real truth is they're over, they wanna be over our health, over our food, over our money, over our freedom. In other words, what they, really, they want total control. And when you read the Bible, here's what you find. The Antichrist says, hey, Give your power to me and 10 kings are going to do it. 10 economic regions are going to do it. Exactly as the Bible foretold 1900 years ago. It's taking place in our lifetime. We're the watchmen on the wall that are watching this take place. We've got to wave the flag. We've got to warn the people. That's our job. If not, their blood is on our hands. And so I look at this. You know what? There's other topics. Before the week is done, I, I want to talk about climate control. I want to talk about what's taking place in terms of the, the immorality, the chaos, what's taking place in the church, even the, the technology, AI, and, and the, the transhumanism, all these things, they're, they're exactly what the Bible said would be in the last days. You see, they're looking for control. They're not looking for our good, they're looking for control. And this is what the Bible said would take place. So what do we say? Well, we have the message, forgiveness of sins. You see, this whole thing came because of the sinfulness of man, because of the powers of the Satan who, who wants control over us. And so the message is how to have forgiveness of sins. The good news is this, the debt has been totally paid. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. And I pray today that you'll say, you know what? I want forgiveness for my sins. I wanna be restored to God. And so confess to God you're a sinner. Confess that when Jesus died on the cross, he died for your sins his blood shed, his death, his burial, his resurrection, they atone for your sins and my sins. And then, you know what? The joy of heaven. Let me tell you this, all we miss out on when the Lord comes is we miss out on the tribulation, we miss out on the disasters of famine and war and, and government control, but we have the joys of Jesus. You see, with all this coming true, exactly as the Bible said, we need to tell them now, Here's why, we don't know how long anyone will live. We don't know how soon the Lord's coming. But what we do know is that right now we're watching the Bible being fulfilled before our very eyes. And so sound the alarm. The good news is Jesus is coming. The good news is you can have salvation today if you come to Jesus, receive him personally as your savior. My friend, that's the blessed hope. That's the hope we have against a, a dark, scary, cloud darkened background of this world with all of its problems. We have the hope of Jesus and the hope of heaven. Thank you for listening today. We'll continue our story tomorrow. But in the meantime, get right with God and then share the gospel with a neighbor or friend. Thank you for joining me this week. We've been studying the watchman on the wall. 
special story in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33, it talks about the responsibility of the watchman. He was high up on the wall. He had a great vantage point. And his job was to sound the alarm if he saw the enemy coming. He couldn't stop the army by himself, but he could sure warn. And this week, we've been looking at a lot of different topics. These are things that the Bible has said will take place in the last days. Incredible things like famine, like wars, like, like the, the money system to collapse. And we're watching this take place in the headlines. But we have some more topics to cover. And they include climate control. Believe it or not, it's, it's there. It's, it's mentioned how it fits in the last days. Even the idea of, of immorality and chaos, the churches, the, de the decline of the church. You see, here's what we found out, that Jesus Christ gives you a name and he puts it in the book of life. And the Antichrist gives you a number and he delivers you to hell. Come join us for this important study and you receive Christ and get a name instead of a number. Mm -hmm.